Rob Brody, I'm speaking with the uh, rather wonderful Mr. Ken Scott. How are you? I'm doing great, thank you. You're English, yeah. like I myself. I am, absolutely. So I'm I proud kept of it the rather wonderful and didn't get too American and, yeah. and whatever. And... I appreciate it. Now, you, you were here for a while, though. You were living in LA. Oh, I, I lived in LA for over 30 years, then wow. two, two years in uh, Nashville, and then now back in England for two and a half years. And you said you're in Yorkshire. North Yorkshire, yeah. I've got a teaching gig up there. I'm uh, a visiting professor at Leeds Beckett University. So it's great. Absolutely loving it. Is it? Does it just feel like the right kind of pace now? Absolutely. I can't see m moving anywhere else again. Besides, we've moved too much recently. But yeah. it's yeah, we're fed up with moving. But no, it, it's driving from the airport to here the other day and looking around and the cars and the buildings and everything it was this for 30 years was my life now i look out and it's cows and sheep and it's rolling hills yes. of yorkshire taking the dog for a walk every morning rain or shine and do you like cricket no <laughs> they're about to say you're in uh, yorkshire yeah i know that's yeah. that's a tough one what do they call it, the Yorkshire, they call it uh, God's country. Yeah, absolutely. It is beautiful. Yorkshire is a very, very beautiful country. So, part of the problem of doing this and being what I do, is I'm a fan of all the people I talk to. And without sounding like a fanboy, I probably have bought Hunky Dory, I don't know, maybe 25 times. Thank you. Know, you. In, in all its various formats, you know, whether it be from cassettes and vinyl copies, and like you are as a fan, you buy your best friend's copies of records and your relatives and stuff. I mean, when I saw you over here, this is going to sound really stupid, um, and uh, Colin says, there's Con Scott over there. I've got a little teary eyes. Oh, God. So don't be all like, because <laughs> the thing is about that, about that, you know, what, the, the, there must have been music for you, like that for you as a kid. Like, you know, there's just certain things that speak to you. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. What was it for you? What? The initial thing completely was Elvis, Bill Haley, yeah. Eddie Cochran, and Gene Vincent yeah. on an old wind-up uh, gramophone with 78s. That, that turned my life around. It, it, my parents were into Mrs. Mills, Russ mm -hmm. Conway, and uh, God, no, please. <laughs> and then finally discovered rock and roll. Did you start Abbey Road? Yep. Actually, I started at EMI Recording Studios, which became... Became Abbey Road, yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No, don't. No. I'm just being pernickety. No, no, no. Pedantic is fine. No, I, t I totally understand. The, so you started there. What was, uh, what was your first job there? In the tape library. Yes. Within two weeks, I think it was, I had uh, a one-inch four-track tape in my hand. The Beatles, Can't Buy Me Love, that just come in from France. No one had heard it yet. Oh. <laughs> and uh, then just a couple of weeks later I'm walking down the corridor and there's George Martin and George Harrison walking towards me <laughs> it was amazing and then I started to work with them and uh, first session I'm an assistant on was the, what, the whole of side two of Hard Day's Night carried on working with them through Robert Soul promoted to disc cutting after that, promoted to engineering, and the first thing I ever do, the first time I ever sit behind a ball, I had no idea what any of it did. <laughs> and it was to record Your Mother Should Know, with the oh. biggest bloody band in the world. <laughs> it, it's, it, it's been trial by fire for me all the way along the line. And luckily, it's worked. Yeah, wow. It's, it's, oh, it's been amazing. Yeah. Absolutely incredible. Yeah. So Hunky Dory, because I'm obsessed, um, we're all fans of things. That that to me is a huge, huge album. For me, is amazingly inspiring because it's the perfect blend of so many genres, so many things. You can hear where he's about to go and things, but just like orchestration of life on Mars. It's just the story. I, the story I heard it was like written. He wrote the orchestration in no time whatsoever because he hadn't done it in advance and you were well, like, Ron, where, where is it? And he went no, off and wrote it, is that not, true? It's not quite like that. It's not quite Ron, like that. Ron, Rono had this habit. Yeah. He'd be writing, he'd be starting the arrangement the night before and he'd fall asleep. 
never finished it. So he would come in early the next day to the studio. He'd go running up to the to the bathroom on the first floor, lock himself in there, and he'd come out half an hour later with a huge grin on his face and this stack of music papers that he'd hand out. Now we never did quite discover was the grin because he'd finished the arrangement or did something else go on in the bathroom but <laughs> it's uh yeah no it happened every time the same way he was he was great he was an amazing arranger uh, the, 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 the walk on the wild side to me absolutely brilliant in how how little there is yeah it, it's oh yeah no ronald was great he really was and what a guitarist what an amazing guitarist now, what's the console there? Is it going straight through the console? And some of those lead tones are so super clean. Yeah, they were made, made very well. It would, he would have been downstairs doing it. We never actually did any recording of the guitars in the control room. But oh, made, they made, a couple of them may have been DI, if I remember correctly. But yeah, it's, we just did what had to be done. You made it remarkably quickly from what I read, is that true? All the records back then were remarkably quick. It was, artists had contracts back then where it was an album every six months. And so everything had to be quick. They had to write it quickly, you had to re rehearse it quickly, record it quickly, go on tour. Then the next six months later, it's the next, the next thing. So yeah, it was uh, two weeks and then Ziggy was two weeks as well. Two weeks recording, then a, probably a, mi a week mixing. Crazy. But you're committing to sounds. You know how it wants to be. Yeah. So yeah. bringing up on fader, it's close yeah. to what you want anyway. Yeah. Well, if you're, if you're, hopefully, if you're around tomorrow, we're hoping to get this monster up and running. And yeah. I'll, be, I'll be doing mixing of tracks that were originally mixed through a Sound Techniques console, of which Ziggy, the whole album, I, I might bring up some tracks. We'll come back doing. for that, gentlemen, <laughs> won't we? Remember? What about uh, Hunky Dory? Was it on the same console? Ah, fantastic. Yeah. So I've got wasn't... Life, Life on Mars, which I, I would probably do tomorrow. As long as if you're going to do Life on Mars through that, I'll be, I'll be there like this, like a little kid. Nice. Yeah. Great track. Yeah. So it wasn't tried in its own console until later? Correct. I never knew Every, that. No, I know. Everyone thinks that it was all assumed. done through Trident A range. It I wasn't. Assumed. Yeah, I know. But that's the way Trident wanted it. But they, they always said, oh, David Bowie recorded through the Trident A range. Well, yeah, that's right. We did do a little bit of recording with him through a Trident A range, but most of it was done through a sound technique. By the time, by the time Queen were there, were there was it a Trident? Still. It was still that. Oh, there yeah, I see. Oh, no, because the other thing to think of is that there was the studio and there was the mix room. Yeah. And the studio had the, the Trident A range, but the mix room was the original Sound Techniques board that they'd had since they opened. And that that was Hey Jude, that was three tracks off of the, the White Album, all of the early Elton John stuff, all of the early Bowie stuff, uh, all the Queen, early Queen stuff, Rolling Stones, Carly Simon, America. The most amazing array of, of albums that were done through a Sound Techniques board, and no one knows of it. But they will now. Good. Lots of people will now. Good. <laughs> That's what we want. How are you, my friend? I'm doing well. Good I'm to see you, Warren. Really, uh, Danny, what's your last name? Danny White. White. Yep. No. So I was over at Mac DSP yesterday doing a, actually being interviewed by Colin. Yeah. Cool. Colin Those goes, guys are Look. great. Colin goes, there's Ken Scott. And I was like, I got all my, my eyes welled up. Yeah. And I was like, Ken Scott? Like, you know, like it turned into like, you know, what is it there? Chris Farley sketch? Like, uh, you oh, know, yeah. Uh, and I was like, turned into mean, a 12 year old again. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah, I'm like, you mean the guy that uh, recorded Hunky Dory, like my favorite album of all time? Like, yeah. Depending on which day it is, it's either, it's either Queen or Bowie. It's pretty much a lot of stuff that, well, we're going to get into it. Anyway, yeah. the point is, I came over and I talked to Ken. And yeah. I was like, what is this? Because I didn't even know what was going on. Yeah. And he's like, oh, this is the console that we used for those albums that you love. Yeah. So there's your intro. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us about this concept. What's going on? I, I, it, it's kind of crazy so um, about four years ago we uh, I got in contact with Jeff Frost Jeff Frost uh, an English engineer uh, started with the RAF and the war and went to the BBC kind of a typical story of those guys like a lot of the guys at, at Abbey Road as well and then uh, went to uh, Levy Brothers on Bond Street uh, ran uh, that studio until Columbia bought it and then he started his own company called Sound Techniques and Sound Techniques started as a recording studio, but when they 
started the studio, they didn't have any money for a desk, so he started. He built his own. Well, guys started hearing about this sound coming out of this console, and some of those first guys were guys like Tutti Camerata from Sunset Sound in Hollywood, Jack Holtzman from Elektra, who will be here tomorrow, right. founder of Elektra, and they said, hey, can you build one of those for us? And he said, never thought about it, but sure. So um, some of the early, some of the early uh, studios would have been Delane Lee. There you go. So that's that's Pink Floyd at Delane Lee. That's a Sound Techniques A range there. Nice. A -ra By the way, A range is a trademark of PMI Audio, Gardenia, California. Everybody got that? <laughs> okay, but the original A range is a Sound Techniques A range. So that's nice. how that name got started. Uh, bands like Pink Floyd, The Faces, The Yardbirds, Jimmy Page. We got a great photo of him with this desk. When Jimi Hendrix got to London, this is the desk he recorded on first. So, wow. so the beginnings of Purple Haze, Wind Cries Mary, Hey Joe, uh, Fire. All right. Great. So nice. anyway, time progresses on. Yeah. And uh, Electra Doors Records like Morrison Hotel, Soft Parade, Waiting for the Sun. And so anyway, a great run. They closed the company in around 1974, and it sat there until we bought the company three years ago. And so we had a decision to make. Do we take this great name and make them all, make 500 series modules and go, here you go? Um, or do we do the hard work yeah. and build that? Build a console. Build a so real tell us, console. Tell us about this console. Okay, so... The idea behind this is to not compromise on the audio. Right. So what we do is we take, can you hand me that photo right there? So this is the desk at Sunset Sound. This is the desk that they would have mixed uh, Let It Bleed on, Beggar's Banquet, Led Zeppelin IV. Uh, so the mix that's on Zeppelin IV is uh, when the levee breaks. So that's pretty good stuff. And so we wanted to take the audio path out of this module yeah. and put it here. And so that's what we've done. We came in and we, re we, we recreated all of the transformers down to the laminations in the transformer cores. A lot of people don't realize it, but these are 50% nickel core transformers. You don't see that. It's expensive to do. But we did that. The 80% nickel cores in the microphone transformers we cut the laminations like they were back then. The pot cores, this is an inductor-based EQ. We did all of the pot, sourced all the pot cores out of one company. They're based in England and they make these in India. It's the only place in the world. Okay, because the windings are different when you use four slots in a core and it makes a difference. So no compromise. Wow. Okay, we added this section down here, the echoes, the monitor section very modern very usable you know the idea is that we could make something that was old that nobody could really use or mix on you know everything through hole everything hand wired I get it but who's gonna buy that yeah. and it's too far when we can make it better as far as the user point of view so new sound techniques comp limiters this is a 7.1 surround uh, center section it can be bought with a much cut down section. Very musician friendly, very homeowner friendly. You can buy these buckets in one bucket, you can short load them. But I think from us, my 17 years in the studio business, I always wanted, would buy quality and I would buy less of it, you know? Sure. And then build on that. And I think for the guys who look at a console like this and they go, I can never afford it. Well, maybe that's true. Right. But it's not like you can't afford a piece of it and build. If you love the sound of this, you may or may not. But if you love it, then get you a little center section, get you a, a, a half a bucket and build on it. Right. You know, so it's reachable. Right. I love this. The paint invaders, yeah. yeah gorgeous. Yeah, we're making these. We bought the company. These are prototypes. We got some work to do on them, but they're gorgeous. We mill all these out of a chunk of aluminum in a CNC machine. <laughs> it's, it, it's insane. Uh, we bought this company, Ernest Turner. These are all the original meters from EMI desks, Sound Techniques desks. So we've gone the extra mile to keep it authentic, Warren. Beautiful. And uh, there you go. This is the prototype. 
absolutely wonderful.